This evening, we will present special and memorial awards for sporting, cultural and academic excellence. Before we begin the official proceedings, we would like to acknowledge the very generous support of sponsors from the local community who have supported Palmerston North Boys High School throughout 2023. Hunting and Fishing, Property Brokers, McVery Crawford Motor Group. Thank you to our event sponsors who have made this evening's presentation on the big screens possible. Manawatu Toyota, Humphreys Construction, PCL Group, Scaffit, T-Market Fresh, Yume Mortgage Advisors, New Zealand Specialist Coatings, Drake International, and the Palmerston North Boys High School Parent Teacher Association. Thank you also to our prize sponsors, Trophy Specialists, Fonterra, Rock Shop, Naylor Lawrence and Associates, Noel Leeming, Kia ora FM, Manawatu Business Chamber, Massey University School of Sport, Exercise and Nutrition, Westpac Bank, DX Mail, GHD, Nodero, National Arts Supplies, Placemakers, PMBHS Parent Teacher Association, Waikato Management School, IPENS, New Zealand Institute of Physics, Macmillan and Lockwood. And thank you to our scholarship sponsors, the Verdict Cafe, Argyle School Wear and the RSA. To begin the proceedings for this evening, can I ask you to please stand? Itu. Oh, to do 
Julia. Vale. Everyone, please sit. Kia ora koutou and good evening, everyone. If we could ask you to please stand now for the singing of Gaudiamus. Please stand. Please sit. Tina Koto Kata. Mr. and Mrs. Bovey, Mayor Grant Smith, members of the official party, ladies and gentlemen, and the young men of Palmer's North Boys High School, welcome to the 2023 prize giving. My name is Grant Watts and I am the board chair. My time as board chair has been both challenging and enjoyable. As a board, we strive to support the management team and the school to achieve their goals. And this year, our young men have achieved some very credible successes. Winning is important. We will never shy away from competition, but it cannot be the final goal. The journey needs to be enjoyed. It needs to be full of memories, both good and bad, and it needs to be challenging. We at Boys High want to create opportunities for you young men to challenge yourselves. We can supply the opportunities, but you need to accept that challenge. You can choose to cruise through your five years at Boys High, or you can tackle every challenge in front of you and walk out of here in year 13 knowing you have used your time here wisely. These challenges can be as simple as trying a more difficult book during silent reading, or trying a new sport, and maybe a sport that scares you a little. My view of Palmerston North boys has been formed through my boys who attended here. I am not an old boy, but I've seen firsthand how the teachers here strive every day to give you the opportunity to find something in yourself that maybe even you did not know what was, that was there. In his first year, my son found a year 19 who made him play rugby, despite the fact that he had never played before. He was a bit skinny and pretty on the, he was on the small side, so why not put him in the scrum? Patrick learnt more about himself on the rugby field that year than he learnt in the previous five. He learned that there are worse things than being knocked on your backside and accepting a challenge, which for him was to play a new sport, was both daunting and rewarding. He got knocked down many times during that first year of rugby, but he kept getting up, sometimes with the help of his mates, and he became a better person for it. If that dean had not pushed him into playing rugby, and if Patrick had taken the easy way out and said no, 
he would not be the man he is today. Patrick learned a lot in his first year at Palmy Boys, but that the most valuable lessons were on that rugby field. We don't apologise for challenging you young men. We don't apologise for making things tough at times. And we certainly don't apologise for leaving you to find your own way out of a mess when you find yourself in one. We may even let you fail at times. It's often due to the failing that you'll find success so much more special. School is the time to challenge yourself in a safe environment. We'll continue to put challenges in front of you, things like crest to crest, silent reading, year 10 camps, drama productions, debating, new sports, or even a new subject, more recently the building program. We can put these in front of you, but you need to take them up. If you leave here having cruised through boys high school, you've missed the point. You've missed a huge opportunity to learn what you are truly capable of. The board works hard to keep upgrading our facilities and we look forward to the completion of the new D block in early 2024. But we're also very aware our most valuable asset is not our buildings, it's our staff. We have over 160 teachers and support staff who all contribute to making Boys High the great school it is. Not long ago, we renovated the science block, but we had scholarship students before we renovated it. It's the teachers that did that, not the building. We also built a whole new art block, but if you look around the school, much of the amazing artwork done by students was done before this was built. It's the teachers that helped our young men do that, to do that, not the building. Our sports facilities are adequate at best, but the results on the sporting field are outstanding due to our staff and supporters. I've met many of you over the past eight months as my role in, as, in my role as chair, and I thank you for all putting the time aside to talk with me. I've been impressed with your enthusiasm for taking on new challenges, whether that be in the classroom, in our administration and support areas, or whilst looking after our facilities. Your never ending energy in finding new ways to make Boys High just that little bit better is very much appreciated. We are very lucky to have you all here. 2023 sees us farewell in two of these long standing staff members Mr. Keith Syme, after 22 years' service, and Mr. Mike Liddicote, after 19. We thank you both for your commitment, passion and skill you brought to Boys High and wish you both well in your retirement. I mentioned earlier that success is an important part of the school culture, but there are a number of ways we as a board judge success. A good example of this is our, this year's First 15, who had a very successful year on the field, ending up as one of the best secondary school teams in New Zealand. But what impressed us just as much as the on-field results was the fact that 26 out of the 28 players in that team started in boys high in year nine and one other in year 10. They are a product of the sports development program that we can be proud of, along with other similar programs like this that we have in music, culture, drama and academia. Another measure of success for the board is understanding that a growing number of our young men do not see university as the pathway they want to take. We have seen many of our students leave school in 2023 to go, work, to, to, to go to work and take on apprenticeships. Our Gateway course started this year with 46 students. 27 of these young men have left or will leave to trade jobs and apprenticeships. Our new building program where the stu students build relocatable homes, ably run by Mr Fogarty, started with a full team of 17 young men but 14 have obtained work as the year went on, and Mr Fogarty is left to complete the houses pretty much on his own. Good luck. We will continue to provide the gateway and building programs, and next year we will add an automotive course, so our young men continue to have opportunities to find new pathways through Palmy Boys. I have realised in my time as chair that being a rector can be a very lonely job. Many decisions that have to be made are not always welcomed by all, or sometimes by any. I thank you, Mr Bovey, for being prepared to make those tough decisions, for keeping our young men top of mind when making these decisions, and for ensuring our school continues to be forward-looking, but still keeping with our traditions and culture. I was very honoured to be invited to a ceremony on Monday morning, where Mr Bovey and his family were presented with a kurawai, which he wears today. 
This was presented in recognition of his 11 years spent here as rector and the unwavering support of his wife Victoria and his children who have grown up knowing he will not always be home for dinner as he had something on at school. I thank Fire Debbie and her team for organising this special event and for recognising our rector in this very special way. Mr Vobie cannot do what he does on his own and is ably supported by his management team led by his deputy, Mr Jerry Atkin. I thank you all for the hard work you do. I thank you for your support of Mr Bovey and his wish to keep offering opportunities to our students to challenge themselves. I know these, deci these, these decisions are made with your support, but I also understand the outcome of these decisions are then left for you and your teams to implement. I thank you for your support in this area. I thank our support teams who look after everything from accounts, admin, library, front office, photocopying, uniform shop, spare centre, cleaning, student support, attendance, property, international marketing team, and the list goes on. There's a lot of people in the school that help out. I understand that much of what you all do is behind the scenes and often seems to go unnoticed. It is not. Without every one of you, this school would not be the school it is. Comments are constantly made about how good the front of the school looks thanks to our property team and we certainly notice when the cleaners are away, it is then we really do notice the amazing job you all do every afternoon when the school is empty. I thank you all and look forward to catching up with you again in 2024. I thank the Board of Trustees for your significant contribution to ensuring that Boys High continues to thrive, yet keeps its traditional focus. Thank you also for your support for me in my first year as board chair and for your willingness to debate and ask the tough questions when needed. I thank our outgoing student representative, Tane Nielsen. You brought the student perspective to the board with clarity and enthusiasm, and I know you will do well as you head to Auckland University in 2024. College House is again proving to be the boarding hostel of choice, with demand for places exceeding our availability. I thank Matt and Tracy Davidson for their continued leadership and commitment to the hostel staff and the young men who attend. We know, as a board, these 180 young men are in good hands. Thank you. We appreciate the support we receive from the Old Boys Association, the Parent Teacher Association, and the Education Foundation Trust. We thank you for the hard work put in by these groups to provide additional support to our school. The extra funding ensures we can continue to provide opportunities to many young men who without the support would not achieve at the level they do. To our young men leaving us in 2023, I hope you look back on your time here and can say you took every opportunity in front of you and leave us better for it. I hope you got knocked on your backside more than once and with help got back up and realise there are worse things than being knocked down, and the getting up and getting back into the fight is a skill well worth learning. I hope you leave here with dreams and goals and the skills to achieve them. The one thing I know you are leaving with is the fact that you will soon be old boys of Palmerston North Boys High. Wear that label with pride like many before you have. As I said earlier, I'm not an old boy. That is not a title I am privileged to wear but you are and my sons are, and that is something that can be never taken from you. We celebrate our old boys and their endeavours as was seen in the recent business and sporting award nights. I'm sure we will see some of you celebrated at these award nights in the future. Thank you again for all coming tonight to celebrate the 2023 prize giving and to support your young men who are receiving awards tonight. It is a proud moment for you all. Enjoy it, and I hope to see many of you back in 2024. Tinakoto, Tinakoto, Tinakoto Kata. Thank you, Mr. Watts. Now, for the first musical interlude of the evening, uh, I'd like to call upon the acoustic guitar group. It's a six string thing, and they'll be performing Un Memento by our own Mr. Paul Dredge.
Very good. Well done, gentlemen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege to be able to present the 2023 Rector's Address, the 122nd of its kind, and it's good to be back in the arena for an evening prize giving for the first time in quite a while. Now, while we had hoped uh, for the first uninterrupted year for some time, the industrial action during 2023 certainly put pay to that, and it was a frustrating time for all concerned. However, once that was settled and teachers were given long overdue reward for an increasingly challenging profession, we were able to get on with it and get some real momentum. Now, because everybody, everyone has been to school, many feel they are entitled to give their opinion, which of course is fine. We are all entitled to an opinion, although I want to quote David Longy in that respect, but as seems to be the way of things these days, many genuinely believe their opinion to be fact. Not an opinion, but fact. We seem to have forgotten the days when having a difference of an opinion was just that, and we could agree to disagree and then just get on with things. Nowadays, everyone with an opinion tends to share it publicly and then think themselves an expert. A bit like in this country where if somebody has ever seen a game of rugby, that automatically somehow qualifies them as a potential all-black coach and selector, and they make it known on the sideline of a children's game to the cringing embarrassment of all around them those who shout abuse at referees but who would never put their money where their mouth is and step up to ref a game. It's pathetic. We've all seen it. I saw it once at a game of under-8s ripper rugby. It was unbelievable. Uh, but I'm drifting away from my original point, which I admit is uncharacteristic. Uh, I'm, I'm sure to many the thought of teaching a class full of 30 teenagers on a hot day when the boys have come in from an enthusiastically rumbustious lunch break with a bit of bull rush or the like out on the field, and they all smell... Uh, that thought would fill many with dread. It's not as easy as some might think. After all, it was the great Roman philosopher Seneca who was moved to say, it is when the gods hate a man with uncommon abhorrence that they drive him into the profession of a schoolmaster. And much as I have nothing but admiration for those at primary schools who teach a room full of new entrants, I know many primary school teachers who feel the same way about their secondary colleagues who have to deal with teenagers all day and maybe boys in particular. If you believe everything you read, then it doesn't look good for boys. A recent article talked about the educational and social time bomb that is the underachievement of boys in the New Zealand education system. I touched on this briefly last year, but since then more research has been carried out that paints a pretty worrisome picture of what it means to be a young man under the current education system. But it's not just here, because according to OECD research, in every developed country, including New Zealand, female students are outperforming male students at every level of education in almost every subject. The only exception in some countries is that male students retain an advantage in mathematics and the physical sciences. The gap between the sexes in reading and writing is a particular concern, and the OECD data shows a consistent and significant male deficit in literacy for many years. And that's a concern in New Zealand, where an NCA everything, and I mean everything, involves having to write uh, a lot. Even maths exams, and I've said this to many parents, where you have to write a million words about how you got the answer. Now, as we all know, boys don't want to write a million words about how you got the answer. They just want to get the answer. And so for many years, the very nature of NCA has seen the underachievement of boys continue and worsen. The system certainly wasn't invented with boys in mind. Now, in the same article written by Dr Michael Johnston of the New Zealand Initiative and former Associate Academic Dean at, Victoria's, at Victoria University's Faculty of Education, along with Barley Hark, who led the disastrous Tomorrow Schools Review and who appears to have, for the sake of this article, become the one leopard to have ever changed his spots, also notes that, crucially, poor score outcomes for boys flow on to tertiary education. And again, the data is compelling. The response of successive New Zealand governments, say Hark and Johnson, of both colours, has been to ignore the issue. The Ministry of Education currently has no initiatives in place to address the underachievement of boys and no intention of changing that. And the Ministry's ethnocentric approach leaves too many questions unanswered. Does our curriculum or our approach to assessment disadvantage boys? Oh, that's a resounding yes, I believe. Does the fact that boys are raised increasingly by solo mums and go to primary schools staffed predominantly by female teachers matter? Do behavioural factors for boys impact on how they are perceived as learners? Does the very nature of modern co-ed schools disadvantage boys? 
Now, Hark and Johnson say they don't have all the answers, although they are clear that successive ministers of education pretending we don't have a boy problem will yield terrible outcomes for all our young men. Now, we know things must be bad when Mr Hark, who has seemingly never taken an interest in single-sex schools before, sits up and takes notice. But it doesn't have to be, gentlemen. We can do something about it. You can do something about it. We can do something about it by not playing the victim. We can do something about it by getting on with it, by doing our best inside and outside of the classroom. We can do something about it by not making excuses, by refusing to be part of the failing boy narrative, by, and here I, I admit I'm borrowing heavily from Dylan Thomas, by not going gentle into that good night, because boys, we have to burn and rave at close of day, rage, rage against the dying of the light. I've probably got a bit carried away there because that's about people heading off to die, but uh, the sentiment remains. And the sentiment is, gentlemen, that by working hard, by focusing on what we can do together to make each of you do your best and be your best, that's all we can ask for. But you, gentlemen, have to play your part. You have to work hard. You have to take opportunities. Every single one of you has potential. Some just need to work out what that potential might be. And many of you do work hard, some more than others, of course, and as I saw, as I read through the reports recently, that was borne out. Some work hard often, some fitfully, some occasionally, some like Halley's Comet. Gentlemen, the key is to be in that often bracket. And I hope that some of the things Mr Watts talked about earlier in terms of the courses that we can now offer will give more young men the opportunity to be more engaged in what they're doing at school. Because in short, gentlemen, all of us want you to do your best. Now, I mentioned opportunities. The opportunities that have given to, been given to not only the young men who will cross the stage this evening and who did so this morning, but to every one of you. And they're there because of the dedication of our staff. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our staff, both teaching and non-teaching, for everything they do to provide these opportunities. There are very few schools left in New Zealand that have such a high level of involvement in the activities that we offer. Earlier today, in our last full assembly for the year, we were able to farewell those staff who are leaving us at the end of the year. I would like to acknowledge their contribution here this evening and thank them for all they have done for the school and wish them all the very best for the future. In particular, two of our long-serving staff members, Mr Liddy Coat and Mr Syme, they've both been here for quite some time, over two decades, uh, and have been huge contributors to the school. Thank you too to Mr Hopwo, who along with his family are returning home to minus 30 degrees in Canada. I would like to thank fellow management team members for their continued commitment and support, Mr Atkin in particular. Mr Atkin is an incredibly hard worker and is, despite being from Buller, very astute. I am fortunate to have Mr Atkin as Deputy Rector as I am to have Mrs Gibbs, Pinder, Sinclair and Van Stiprian on the management team. Gentlemen, your support and commitment is very much appreciated. Management meetings are frequently full of robust conversations and Mr Sinclair's pithy observations on the state of the country and its politics are a real highlight. Those meetings are also highly anticipated as much because of Mrs Sinclair's contributions, uh, no relation, uh, as they are for professional discourse. But Mrs Sinclair does a great job. She's superb at organising me and for assuring the most concerned parents that they really don't need to talk to the rector about their son's lost lunchbox. Mr McInulty and his property team continue to do a great job, regularly frustrated by the way some of our young men treat their environment. He and his team work hard to make, the school, make sure the school is in good nick. I'd like to thank him and his team for all they do. Thank you to Mrs Wenham and her team who do a fantastic job in the CRD office. Thank you also to the Old Boys Association, the PTA and the Education Foundation Trust for their continued support of the school and our young men. Thank you also to the Board of Trustees, and particularly our new Board Chair, who you already met this evening, Mr Watts, who replaced Mr Lawrence earlier in the year. Mr Watts is a familiar face, having been on the School Board since 2008, and he is a real supporter of our school with a wonderfully calm and measured approach to all he does. Connor Giltrap has done an outstanding job as Head Prefect. Connor is a young man who models the values of the school, and he has been a superb representative of Palmy Boys. 
He and Deputy Head Prefects Connor Puanaki and Jonathan Jamison formed an excellent team and I would like to thank all of this year's Prefect group along with those three young men for their enthusiasm and their support. Thank you to Mr Pinder, Mrs Dearlove and all involved in organising tonight's prize giving uh, and in particular to Mr Young and Mr Dredge and Mr Lauridson uh, and our musicians who are performing throughout the evening. Thank you too to you, our school community, for your support throughout the year. I would also like to thank Mrs Bovey and my family, Mr Watts mentioned earlier. I do in this forum every year. It can be a very busy role and I do not see as much of the family as I would like to. Finally, to those who are leaving, gentlemen, thank you for your contribution over, in most cases, the last five years. I wish you all the very best for your life after Palmy boys. Once you leave, continue to give things a go and don't be too worried if a fully formed picture of what the rest of your life, or even of next year, looks like. You don't have to make decisions just yet. As Gilda Radner once said, life is about not knowing. It's about having to change, taking the moment and making the best of it without knowing what's going to happen next. So in other words, once you've given your best in the upcoming exams and head off, take your chances when you can, gents, and enjoy the journey. And stay in touch too, gentlemen. We take great pride in watching the progress of our old boys. Juniors, you have a few weeks ahead of you until the end of the school year, but in the meantime, I would like to wish all the friends and families of the Palmerston North Boys High School community a safe and happy festive season and have an enjoyable summer break. Thank you. And our next performance this evening, ladies and gentlemen, is the concert band, Celebration for Winds and Percussion by James Swearingen.
Thank you very much to the concert band, superb performance. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce the recipients of academic prizes this evening. These awards are presented in groups, and I would ask that you please applaud when the last member of the group has received their award. I'd like to invite Mr O'Connor, President of the Palmas North Boys High School Old Boys Association, forward to make these awards. Unless otherwise stated, prizes for subject winners have been sponsored by the Palmas North Boys High School Parent Teacher Association. Year 11 prize winners, and again, unless otherwise stated, these awards are for first in NCEA Level 1 subjects. First in accounting, for which he receives the Nada Lawrence Award, Manish Petty Redler. First in agriculture and horticulture, for which he receives the Turners and Growers Cup, Ben Harry. First in Art Digital, for which he receives the New Zealand Specialist Coatings Award, Ryan Goodall. First in Art Visual, for which he receives the National Art Supplies Award, Zion Lee William. First in Business Studies, for which he receives the Westpac Award, Cohen Denton. First in Business Studies, for which he receives, sorry, first in Design and Visual Communication, for which he receives the GHD Award, Rhys Hobdy. First in Digital Technologies, for which he receives the Nadero Award, Ryan Riley, sorry, Ryland Riley. First in Drama, Isaac Fox. First equal in alternate English, Daniel Newsom. First equal in alternate English, Fletcher Hoskins. First in, geog in geography, for which he receives the Astral Trophy, Jiro Mohi Hanare. First in German, Pamadu Eberethna. First in Health, for which he receives the Hunting and Fishing Award, Max Carleton. First in History, for which he receives the Chanuk Bear Rock, Regan O'Connor. First in Japanese, Gray Larry. Please join me in congratulating our prize winners. First in joinery, for which he receives the Humphreys Construction Award, Tommy Reid. First equal in Te Māori, for which he receives the Kia ora FM Prize, Minarapa Puisi. First in mechanical engineering, for which he receives the Manawatu Toyota Award, Caleb Hamblin. First in performance music, for which he receives the Rock Shop Prize, Stanley Pendergill. First in Sports Science, for which he receives the Massey University School of Sport, Exercise and Nutrition Award, Jacob Lean. First equal in Mathematics, for which he receives the Yoon Mortgage Advisors Award, Austin Kiniston. First equal in Te Māori, for which he receives the Kia ora FM Prize, and first equal in Māori Performing Arts, Boston Maniapoto. First in French and first in English, for which he receives the PCL Group Award, Angus Childs. First in Level 2 Classical Studies, Oliver Song. First in Level 2 Chemistry, Simon Ton.
first in Level 2 Accounting, for which he receives the Naylor Lawrence Award, Blair Very. First in Level 2 Physics, for which he receives the Fonterra Excellence Award, Drove Banerjee. First in Level 2 Biology, for which he receives the Fonterra Excellence Award, George Heyman. First in Level 2 Geography, for which he receives the Hunting and Fishing Award, Adil Ngrazi. First in Level 2 English Language Tuition, Mehdi Ali Akbar. First Equal in Māori Performing Arts, first in Level 2 Te Reo Māori, for which he receives the Kia ora FM Award, Ihaka Rapera. First in Level 2 Calculus, first in Level 2 English, for which he receives the PCL Group Award, and first in Level 2 History, Edmund Brown. First Equal in Level 3 Calculus, Keishu Chen. Please join me in congratulating our prize winners. We move now to Year 12 awards, and unless otherwise stated, these prizes are for first in NCEA Level 2 subjects. First in Art Painting, for which he receives the National Art Supplies Award, Ashton Malloy. First in Art Photography, Terence Corthu Thomas. First in Business Studies, for which he receives the Westpac Award, Luke Atienza. First in Agriculture and Horticulture, for which he receives the Turners and Grower Cup, Nicholas Ferry. First in Construction, for which he receives the Humphreys Construction Award, Sam McCurris. First in Digital Technologies, for which he receives the Nadero Award, Albara El Sakath. First in Drama, Jake Maskell. First in Economics, for which he receives the DX Mail Award, CJ Reid. First in Electronics, for which he receives the Noel Leeming Award, Trey Viviani. First in Alternate English, Logan White. First in Health, for which he receives the Hunting and Fishing Award, Diego Rosson. First in High Performance Sport, for which he receives the Massey University School of Sport, Exercise and Nutrition Award, Mihiro Hada. First in Japanese, Junhee Cho. First in Joinery, for which he receives the Scafford Award, Jack Reddington. First in Māori Performing Arts, Hawaii Dokiti Pariti. Please join me in congratulating our prize winners. And the first young man in the next group, Jaden Hitter, is receiving the first the award for first in mathematics, for which he receives the Ewing Mortgage Advisors Award. Now, Jaden's actually away with the New Zealand under-19 softball team at the World Cup in Mexico. Uh, first in mechanical engineering, for which he receives the Manawatu Toyota Award, Matthew Sorrell. First in media studies, for which he receives the Manawatu Business Chamber Award, Jesse Franks. First in performance music, for which he receives the Rock Shop Prize, Alex Christensen. First in science, for which he receives the Fonterra Excellence Award, Luca Tartana. First in sports and exercise studies, for which he receives the Massey University School of Sport, Exercise and Nutrition Award, Brody Campbell. First in sports science, for which he receives the Massey University School of Sport, Exercise and Nutrition Award, Jack Rowe. First in Statistics, for which he receives the Drake International Award, Riley Theobald. First in Design and Visual Communication, for which he receives the GHD Award. And first in Level 2 Art Design, for which he receives the New Zealand Specialist Coatings Award, Matthew Cook. 
first in level three Te Reo Māori, for which he receives the Kia Ora FM Award, Bailey Nātai Crib. Please join me in congratulating our prize winners. The next group of awards go to our Year 12 Accelerate students, and these young men take up to five subjects in advance of their year level. First in accounting, for which he receives the Nader Lawrence Award, Jack Trotter. First equal in calculus, Scott Sun. First in Geography, for which he receives the Hunting and Fishing Award, Patrick Cannon. First in Classics, Stephen Rosendale. First in Level 2 French and first in Statistics, for which he receives the Drake International Award, Kieran Gill. First equal in English and first in History, Jesse Akapugo. First in Chemistry, for which he receives the Fonterra Excellence Award, and first in Physics, Toby Ray. First in Level 3 Media Studies, for which he receives the Manawatu Business Chamber Award, first in Economics, for which he receives the Westpac Award, and first equal in English, Matthew Wong Chotti. Please join me in congratulating our prize winners. The next young men are in year 13, and unless otherwise stated, these awards are for first in NCEA level three subjects. First in accounting, for which he receives the Naylor Lawrence Award, Max Hannon. First in agriculture and horticulture, for which he receives the Turners and Growers Cup, Jonathan Jamison. First in Art Design, for which he receives the New Zealand Specialist Coatings Award, Tino Halatuituia. First in Art Painting, for which he receives the National Art Supplies Award, Tyler Fleming. First in Art Photography, for which he receives the UCOL Award, Mackenzie Lee. First in Business Studies, for which he receives the Westpac Award, Jerome Robinson. First in Calculus, for which he receives the Ewan Mortgage Advisors Award, Kurt Kabir. First in Construction, for which he receives the Macmillan and Lockwood Award, Hamish Edmonds. First in Design and Visual Communication, for which he receives the GHD Award, Thomas Van Ryswick. First in Digital Technologies, for which he receives an Odero Award, Blake Worsley. First in Electronics, for which he receives the Noel Leeming Award, Harrison Williams. First in English, for which he receives the PCL Group Award, Matteo Godoy de Rosa. First in French, Jacob Smith. First in Geography, for which he receives the Drake Cup, Sam Maletta. First in Health, for which he receives the Hunting and Fishing Award, Luke Radford. First in High Performance Sport, for which he receives the Massey University School of Sport, Exercise and Nutrition Award, Sam Kennett. First in History, Jacob Westcott. Please join me in congratulating our prize winners. First in Japanese, Thomas Corkery. First in Joinery, for which he receives the Scafford Award, Liam McEwen.
First in Māori Performing Arts, Jade Faulkner. First in Mathematics, for which he receives the UN Mortgage Advisors Award, Alan Miguel Cruz. First in Japanese, Thomas Corkery. First in Pitto, for which he receives the Hunting and Fishing Award, Van Prenter. First in Sport and Exercise Studies, for which he receives the Massey University School of Sport, Exercise and Nutrition Award, Dylan Van Neerkirk. First in Statistics, for which he receives the Drake International Award, Noah McCullum. First in Economics, for which he receives the Westpac Award, first in English Language Tuition, and first in Chinese, Hanyan Lu. First in Biology, for which he receives the Fonterra Excellence Award, first in Sports Science, for which he receives the Massey University School of Sport, Exercise and Nutrition Award, and first equal in Physics, for which he receives the Fonterra Excellence Award, Jason Sang. Please join me in congratulating our prize winners. The final group of awards in this part of the ceremony is for young men who are studying at university and scholarship level. First in advanced accounting, for which he receives the Nader Lawrence Award, Arian Mandry. First in advanced biology, for which he receives the Fonterra Excellence Award, Connor Giltrap. First in Advanced Physics, for which he receives the New Zealand Institute of Physics Prize, Daniel Fletcher. First in Advanced English, for which he receives the PCL Group Award, Liam Nielsen. First in Level 3 Chemistry, for which he receives the Fonterra Excellence Award, first equal in Level 3 Physics, for which he receives the Fonterra Excellence Award, and first in Advanced Calculus, Jun Ho Bang. First in Level 3 Classical Studies, first in Level 3 Performance Music, for which he receives the Rock Shop Prize, and first equal in Advanced History, Thomas Malone. First in Advanced Economics, for which he receives the Waikato Management School Prize in Economics, and first equal in Advanced History, Tom Tane Nielsen. First in Advanced Chemistry, for which he receives the Fonterra Excellence Award, and first in Advanced Statistics, for which he receives the Drake International Award, Aidan Brown. Please join me in congratulating our prize winners. <laughs> and thank you, Mr O'Connor, who's already gone. Thank you, Mr. Atkin. Well done. Uh, we move now to the next performance of the evening, and that's a performance from the, the school's top choir manifesto. They are performing Victor May Pascali Lauders, arranged by Michael Engelhart. One, two, one, two, three. Big Timmy. 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 Big team, 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 Amen. 
Gentlemen, it's my pleasure now this evening, ladies and gentlemen, to announce the Cultural and Sporting Awards for 2023, and I would like to invite Mr Watts forward to make these presentations. We'll begin this evening with club awards, and these awards are worthy of individual applause as the young men cross the stage. The Doolan Family Cup for Gordon Club Captain Leadership, and the Andrews Cup for Tennis, Gordon Club Captain Cole Phillips. <laughs> the Dennis Duffy Cup for Table Tennis, the Chang Cup for Volleyball, and the Davenport Cup for Swimming. For Phoenix, Club Captain Xavier Coleman. The Whitehead Family Cup awarded to the Albion Club Captain for Leadership and the Mummery Cup for Hockey, the Waldegrave Cup for Rugby and the Butler Cup for Cricket. Albion Club Captain Liam O'Connor. <laughs> the Fountain Love Cup awarded to the Kiora Club Captain for Leadership along with the Sims Trophy for Chess, the Young Trophy for the Corral Competition, the Elwood Cup for Debating, the Cutler Cup for Football, and the Gordon Hughes Walker Cup for Squash, Kiora Club Captain Harry Gordon. <laughs> with some assistance here from Hamish. The Monrad Cup, the Denton Cup for the Road Race, the Ross Brown Batten for Marching, the Lewison Cup for Athletics, and the Robin Doyle Memorial Trophy for Athletics Relays. And of course, that's the first time, well, tonight is the first time this trophy will be awarded uh, following Mr Doyle passing away earlier this year. And the Shan Shield for the overall winner of the club competition, Murray Club Captain Connor Giltrap.
Well done to all our club leaders. Well done, Jess. Cultural awards. Now, these will be presented in one group, and please, as we have done throughout the evening, uh, hold your applause until the entire group is on the stage. The Brent R. Costley Cup for the best year 13 debater, Tane Nielsen. The Alison Dickinson Cup for European Languages, Ashton Blinkhorn. <coughs> the Burton Cup for Outstanding Contribution to the Dramatic Performing Arts, Isaac Fox. The Kilsby Cup for Excellence in Drama, two awards this evening, Camden Woodruff and Jake Maskell. The Kapahaka Award for Excellence in and Commitment to Kapahaka, Ihaka Rapira. The Bevan Cup for Outstanding Musicianship, Torrance Chung. The Winston Hall Cup for Outstanding Leadership and Contribution to School Music, Thomas Malone. The Pacifica Leadership Award, Tevita Fakahau. Please join with me in congratulating these young men. <laughs> we'll move now to presentations of the Barraclough Award. And these young men have earned Level 3 Barraclough Excellence Awards. Again, please hold your applause until the entire group, and it's a large one, uh, is assembled on stage. Darren Juru. Griffin Roberts. William Bovie. Ethan Campbell. Xavier Coleman. Tom Collier, Reuben Duker, Connor Giltrap, Harry Gordon, Jonathan Jemison, Zach Jaslars. Sam Kennett, Liam McEwen, Josh Mokahi, Connor Puanaki, Rory Trotter, Jonathan Hillis. Hamish Edmonds, Luke Harris, Tom Harwinkles, and Ravine Samarasekara. Congratulations to these young men. We move now to the presentation of honours ties, and this year's honours ties are awarded to young men in years 11, 12 and 13 for outstanding achievement in academic, cultural or sporting activities. The following presentations will again be made in groups. Academic honours ties will be awarded retrospectively after the release of scholarship results early in 2024. Recipients will receive a certificate and, if this is their first honours award, the presentation of the honours tie itself. Honours ties for 2023 in boxing, Keanu Mooney. In canoe polo, Sam Harwinkles. 
and Canoe Polo, Ben Pedersen. For Canoe Polo, Liam McEwen. For Canoe Polo, Tom Howinkles. For clay target shooting in 2022 and 23, Hayden Lowry. For clay target shooting in 2023, Jacob Little. And for clay target shooting again this year, Benjamin Transom. In cricket, for 2023, Matthew Rowe. In cricket, Jerome Robinson. For cricket, Van Prenter. For cycling in 2023, Zachary Woollett. For cycling in 2023, Wilson Hannon. For dance in 2022 and 23, Camden Woodruff. For dance in 2022 and 23, Jake Maskell. And for debating in 2023, Tane Nielsen. Congratulations to these young men. Continuing with our honours ties for football in 2023, Ben Ditchfield. For football, Diego Coleman. Again for football, Cor Hasur. For football in 2023, Darren Juru. For football in 2022 and 2023, Xavier Coleman. For hockey in 2023, Tom Collier. For judo in 2023, Leon Payne. For karate in 2023, Drew Bennett. For motocross in 2023, Charlie Weatherall. For multi sport in 2023, Charlie Hook. For music and performing arts in 2023, Sam Millward. For music and performing arts in 2023, Mike Sung. For music and performing arts in 2022 and 23, Torrance Chung. <clears throat> for music and performing arts for 23, Axis Simon. Music and performing arts in 2023, Joshua Webster. For officiating in 2022 and 23, Benjamin Algie. And for officiating in 2023, Aidan Brown. Congratulations to this group of prize winners. <clears throat> Continuing with honours ties this evening for oratory in 2023, Leo Mwapi. For the Rector's Company in 2023, Jesse Franks. For roller skating in 2023, Benjamin Shirley. For rugby and rugby league in 2023, Ryder Crosswell. For rugby in 2023, Nehemiah Sua. For rugby in 2023, Mativa Fonua. For rugby in 2023, Tom Ilston Park. 
for rugby in 2023, Quinn Sturmey. For rugby in 2023, Eli Odenron. For rugby in 2022 and 23, Liam O'Connor. For rugby in 2022 and 23, Logan Wallace. For rugby in 2022 and 23, for rugby sevens in 2023 and for rugby league in 2022 and 23, Tane Harvey. For softball in 2022 and 23, Jaden Hitter. As you heard Mr Atkins say earlier, uh, Jaden's currently competing in Mexico in the Softball World Cup. Swimming in 2022 and 23, Joshua Carroll. Swimming for 2022 and 23, and water polo for 2021, 22 and 23, Alex Odom. Table tennis for 2023, Akshay Anish. Touch for 2023, Bailey Natai Crib. Water polo in 2021, 22, and 23, Cole Phillips. Volleyball in 2023, Tashar Lackey, who was absent this evening. Waka Ama in 2023, Fraser Wanahu. Weightlifting in 2023, Franklin Clark. Congratulations to this group of prize winners. Well done. <clears throat> we will now make a special presentation for outstanding contribution to our first teams. Custom-made cap boxes are awarded to young men and first teams who have made a significant number of appearances for that team, and each code has its own criteria. Th thank you to our property manager, Mr McInulty, for making these wonderful cap boxes. In cricket, Ethan Campbell. In hockey, Tom Collier. In hockey, Carter Rose Robinson. Carter isn't with us this evening. He has a broken ankle. But he did play 144 games for the first hockey 11. In hockey, Joshua Smith. And in rugby, Tane Harvey. Congratulations and well done to these young men. The final awards in this section recognise achievement at the highest level in cultural and sporting activities. These awards will be presented individually. In 2023, the Ducks Dorum, the top sports award. It's a joint award this year with no runner-up. Our first recipient this evening received an honours tie in 2023. He was a member of the first Cricket 11 team in 2022 and 23 and a member of the First Eleven football team in 21, 22, and captain in 2023. For the First Cricket Eleven, he played 24 games in 2023 and a total of 41 games for the team. In 2023, he was awarded the Bowling Cup for taking 30 wickets at 15.6 runs per wicket, and he was awarded the Hewer Trophy for best bowling performance. At the Super 8 Schools Cricket Tournament, he took nine wickets for 12 runs in one game, including six wickets in one over. These figures were the best ever by a boys high first 11 player. The previous best figures were nine for 20, taken by Keith Hatch 90 years ago in 1933. Sorry, I added that bit myself, uh, Mr Sinclair. Uh, for the first 11 football team, he played 30 games in 2023, and a total of 85 games for that first 11 team. He was awarded the Price Trophy for 
for Best Defender in 2021, 22 and 23. In 2023, he was selected for the Manawatu Under-17 football team, the Central District's Under-17 cricket team, the Manawatu Senior Men's cricket team, the New Zealand Under-19 cricket squad, and he is the non-travelling reserve for the Under-19 Cricket World Cup qualifying tournament. The co-winner of the Hannay Cup and the Palmerston North Boys High School Uniform Outlet Award for Outstanding Prowess in School Sport, ducks the door in for 2023, is Matthew Rowe. We will now watch a short visual presentation of Matthew in action. Matthew's fellow Ducks for 2023, received an honours tie in 2021, 2022 and 2023. He was a member of the school's Premier A water polo team in 2020, 21, 22 and 23 and he was a member of the school swimming team in 2019, 20, 21, 22 and 23. So it was the entire time here. At the 2023 New Zealand Secondary Schools National Championships, he was part of the 4x50 freestyle team that won the 4x50 relay, were first in the 4x100 freestyle relay, second in the 8x50 freestyle relay, third in the 2x50 freestyle relay, and third in the 4x50 medley relay. He has been selected for the Manawatu Senior Men's Water Polo Team in 2020, 21, 22, and in 2023, he was the MVP. In 2023, he has been training with the New Zealand Senior Men's Water Polo Team, and he was selected for the New Zealand Under-20 Water Polo Team that went to the Junior World Championships in Romania. And just this week, he has been named captain of the New Zealand Under-19 Water Polo Team, which is heading to Australia in December. The winner of the Hannay Cup and Palmerston North Boys High School Uniform Outlet Award for Outstanding Prowess in School Sport, ducks the door and for 2023 is Cole Phillips. <laughs> we will now also watch a short visual, visual presentation of Cole in action. the North get there by 0.1 of a second. No, hang on, boys. Hang on, boys. Stay there. Stay there. 
because the next award is to the Duxartium. And we'll begin with the 2023 runner-up to the Duxartium. He received an honours tie in 2023. He has been a member of the Palmerston North Boys High School Stage Band in 2022 and 23, and a member of the Concert Band in 2021, 22 and 23. He was the winner of the Gold Award at the Lindisfarne Festival of Bands Solo Competition and won Best Concerto at the Institute of Registered Music Teachers Instrumental Competition. He was highly commended as part of the Palmerston North Boys High School Trio at the New Zealand Community Trust Chamber Music Competition. He was the Music Solo Competition winner at the Super 8 Schools Cultural Festival. In 2023, he achieved an Associate of Trinity College of London Award in the Clarinet with distinction. And in 2023, he was selected for the NZSO National Youth Orchestra. Runner-up to the Ducks Artium for 2023 is Mike Sung. <clears throat> And the 2023 Ducks Artium. He received an honours tie in 2022 and 23. He has been a member of the school senior production in conjunction with Girls High in 2022 and 23 and had the lead role in 2023. He was a member of the school's soap choir in 2022 and 23 and a member of the school's manifesto choir who you just heard perform earlier in 23. In the Dance NZ Made Into School competition, he was regional Year 12 solo champion. He achieved first placings at the Impact Dance Competition, the Central Fusion Dance Competition, the Smash Dance Competition, the Carpety Dance Competition, the Upper Hutt Dance Competition, and the Hip Hop Unite National Competition. At the Kairos Dance Convention in Auckland, he was winner of a scholarship to attend Ettinghausen's Professional Dance Academy for 2024, which has been deferred to 2025 in Sydney, and he gained acceptance into the Transit Performing Arts Academy in Melbourne for 2024-25. In 2022, at the Hip Hop Unite World Championships in Portugal, as part of the only New Zealand team that qualified, he finished fourth in the world in the Hip Hop Duo event, and that event happened after last year's prize giving, hence it's included tonight. The winner of the Spears Cup and Photo Life Award for Outstanding Prowess in a School Cultural Activity, Ducks Artium for 2023, Jake Maskell. <laughs> and we will now watch a short visual presentation of Jake performance. Please stand and together we will sing the school song for our Duxes. Thank you, Mr. Watts.
Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, gentlemen. Our final performance for the evening, ladies and gentlemen, is from the stage band, and they are performing Whispering by John Schonberger, arranged by Eric Richards. Fantastic. Well done, gentlemen. Uh, we come now to the presentation of the Memorial Awards and Awards for All Round Excellence, and I'd like to invite Mr Lidicote forward to present these awards. First are the Memorial Awards, and these awards will be presented in silence uh, with no applause. The young men will cross the stage individually and leave the stage. Please stand 
and bow your heads. The John Prestige Memorial Shield for contribution to the school concert band, Thomas Malone. The Lynn Sullivan Memorial Cup for the best level three graphics student, Thomas Van Racewick. The Balsillie Scholarship, Carson Harvey. Carson is currently overseas undergoing a medical procedure. The Robert Young Memorial Scholarship for Academic Excellence from a Year 12 pupil, Jakob Alamu. The WG Black Memorial Scholarship for Academic Excellence from a Year 12 pupil, Kieran Gill. The Ross Irwin Memorial Essay, Liam Nielsen. The Todd Dury Memorial Trophy for Determination and Commitment to Academic Pursuits and Prowess in School Sport, Mahiro Hada. The Carlton Fogg Memorial Trophy for Personal Achievement in Year 12, John Lawat Mahasa Virichai. The Lyndon Potts Memorial Trophy for Outstanding Character and Diligence, Jonathan Jamison. The Dawson Tamatia Memorial Trophy for a Senior Māori Student, Connor Puanaki. Connor also receives the Stubbs Memorial Trophy for all-round participation and outstanding service in the senior school. The Richard Absalom Memorial Trophy for outstanding qualities of fitness, courage, determination and dedication, Logan Wallace. The Palmerston North RSA Trust Scholarship for commendable leadership and sportsmanship, Connor Giltrap. Thank you, gentlemen. If you could please leave the stage. And please, ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. The next awards are for all round excellence, and these will be presented individually. The Stevenson Family Cup for Character, Integrity and Leadership in Year 11, Henry Speedy. The John Reed Cup for Outstanding Acad Academic Achievement in Year 11, Simon Tong. The Victor Pollard Cup, awarded for outstanding sporting endeavour in year 11, Diego Coleman. The Graham Family Cup, for outstanding co-curricular achievements in year 11, Ihaka Rapira. The Newman Award for Determination and Perseverance in Academic and Sporting Activities, Tom Ilston Park. The Hodder Brothers Cup for Outstanding Academic and Sporting Pursuits by a Senior Pupil, Alex Odom. The Stewart Cup for Outstanding Service to the School, Tane Nielsen. The Orem Cup for Outstanding Performance in School Sport across a range of codes, Ethan Campbell. The Fred Hollows Award for Academic Achievement, Lachlan Fraser.
The Man of Outstanding Character Award for the Year 13 pupil recognised by his peers and as voted by his peers as displaying outstanding character, Alex Murray. Well done, gentlemen. Congratulations on this group of applause. The next awards are scholarships for tertiary study from various tertiary institutes. Uh, please hold your applause until the entire group is on stage this time. The Prime Minister's Vocational Excellence Award, Joel Fountain. The Central Energy Trust Vocational Bursary, Liam McEwen. The Lambie Centennial Scholarship for Excellence Through Hard Work, Matt Paiwai Young. The Lambie Centennial Scholarship for Excellence Through Hard Work and the University of Otago Future Leaders Scholarship, Connor Giltrap. The Colin Spratt Scholarship, Levi Bannister Plumridge. The University of Auckland Top Achiever Scholarship, Thomas Malone. University of Auckland Top Achiever Scholarship, Tane Nielsen. University of Waikato Scholarship for Outstanding Academic Achievement, Aidan Brown. University of Waikato Sir Edmund Hillary Scholarship, Wilson Hannon. Massey University Business Excellence Scholarship, Alex Murray. A Massey University Business Excellence Scholarship and an Academy of Sports Scholarship, Tom Collier. A Massey University College of Humanities and Social Sciences, Outstanding Social Sciences Student Award, Max Hannon. Please join me in congratulating these young men. In our second group of tertiary study scholarships, a Victoria University of Wellington, Rokaraka Scholarship, Albara al -Sakaf. A Victoria University of Wellington, Tangiwai School Lever Scholarship, Oliver Murray. A Lincoln University Future Leaders Scholarship, Reuben Duker. A Lincoln University Cricket Sports Scholarship, Matthew Rowe. A University of Otago Pacific Entrance Scholarship, Elijah Lockini. A University of Otago Māori Entrance Scholarship, Drew Kostiaoyoi. A University of Otago Leaders of Tomorrow Entrance Scholarship, Jason Tsang. A University of Otago Māori Entrance Scholarship, Rico Albert. A University of Otago Māori Entrance Scholarship, Manaya Manu. A University of Otago Performance Entrance Scholarship, Ben Pedersen. University of Otago Performance Entrance Scholarship, Joshua Webster. And Lincoln University Rugby Sports Scholarship, Tom Elston Park.
Congratulations to these young men. We will now come to the presentation of this year's Palmerston North Boys High School's Rector's Scholarships, the Argyle Scholarship and the Verdict Cafe Scholarships. Again, please hold your applause until the entire group is assembled on stage. These awards recognise a young man's contribution to Palmerston North Boys High School. 2023 Argyle Scholarship, Rory Trotter. 2023 Verdict Cafe Scholarship, Tyler Fleming. 2023 Rector Scholarships go to Jonathan Hillis. Rector Scholarship to Hamish Edmonds. Rector Scholarship Sam Kennett. Rector Scholarship for Liam McEwen. And a Rector Scholarship for Blake Worsley. There's also a Rector's Prize for the Head Prefect, and I think this year this goes to Conor Giltrap. Please join me in congratulating these young men. And I'd just like to thank Conor for his significant contribution to our school this year. Uh, that's a very deserved award. The next awards are for academic excellence at year 13. Now these awards are based on internal assessments and examinations. Uh, the bursaries are for $750 each. Please hold your applause again till the group is on stage. A David Sims bursary, Matt Paiwai Young. David Sims bursary, Torrance Chung. David Sims Bursary, Noah McCallum. And David Sims Bursary, Lachlan Fraser. And David Sims Bursary, Jason Sang. A Tim O'Connor Bursary to Thomas Malone. A Tim O'Connor Bursary to Griffin Roberts. A Tim O'Connor bursary to Arian Mandry. A Tim O'Connor bursary for Liam Nielsen. And a Tim O'Connor bursary to Kurt Kabir. Please join with me in congratulating our bursary winners. The next three awards are for Palmerston North Boys High School scholarships, with each young man receiving $1,250 and an academic honours tie. A Palmerston North Boys High School scholarship for 2023, Daniel Fletcher. A 2023 Palmerston North Boys High School scholarship, Isaac Luoni. and a 2023 Palmerston North Boys High Scholarship to John Ho Bang. Congratulations to these three young men. The next two awards are to our top two academic achievers in 2023. We'll begin with the 2023 Proxima Akeset, or runner-up to the Ducks. In 2022, he achieved an NZQA scholarship in economics and an NZQA scholarship in history. In 2023, he was first in advanced economics and first equal in advanced history. In 2023, he achieved an A- minus in the Massey University Medieval World History paper and A in the Waikato University Economics 
University paper and an A-plus in the Waikato University law paper. Runner-up to the Ducks and winner of the Andrew Campbell Cup for academic diligence, a Palmerston North Boys High School scholarship and an academic honours tie, Proxima Keset for 2023 is Tane Nielsen. Stand over here. 2023, Ducks Literarum. In 23, he was first in advanced chemistry and first in advanced statistics. In 2023, he achieved an A plus in the Canterbury University Calculus paper, an A plus in Waikato University Economics, and A plus in Waikato University Statistics. For the outstanding student in academic work in 2023 and the winner of the Vernon Murray Prize, the Barraclough Bequest, a Palmerston North Boys High School Scholarship, the Rector's Cup and an academic honours tie, the Ducks Literarum for 2023, Aidan Brown. Please stand and together we will sing the school motto song, Close to the New. One and a half cheers for the ducks. The final presentation for the evening, ladies and gentlemen, is to our student leaders for 2024. We'll be announcing the first group of prefects for 2024, and these young men will receive prefix badges and honours ties. Again, please hold your applause till the group is on stage. Jamie Bennett. Sam McCarris. Leo Mwape. Congratulations to these young men. Well done. Deputy Head Prefect for 2024, as in 2023, gentlemen, we have named two Deputy Head Prefects. For 2024, Sam Millwood.
and joining Sam as Deputy Head Prefect for 2024, Jack Trotter. Head Prefect for 2024, congratulations to Jake Maskell. School stand. Connor. Boys. Well done, gentlemen. Our last presentation for the evening is the head prefix address, so I'd like to welcome to the lectern Connor Giltrap. Connor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bovey. As he just said, my name is Connor Giltrap and I feel very privileged to be able to give you all the 117th Head Prefect Address here in 2023. If we go back to the start of 2019, I can vividly remember making the decision to leave home in Whanganui and come here to board at Palmerston North Boys High School. It was something I'd always wanted, yet that did nothing to mitigate the nerves. I had grown up around the Palmy Boys environment and had always wanted to experience it for myself. It was a daunting thing for me, a brand new place with brand new people. On the very first day, I walked into E3 with my new class 9BS, and I will be honest, sitting in class within the first 20 minutes, I did cry. However, day by day, I got settled in, and after a few days, I knew my way around and felt at home. That is what I love about this school, just the feeling you get being a part of something special and being a part of a legacy bigger than yourself. The strong links the school keeps with its past, while also having an eye on the present and on the future. The environment that is created here really sticks with me, as I'm sure it has or will do at some point for all of you. The quantity of opportunities here, as well as the quality of these same opportunities, is what really stands out to me about this school. To my fellow Year 13s, we come now to the end of our schooling. This is not the end, but the foundations of our future. It is a chance for us to use what we have been given and take control of our next steps. I've loved these past five years with you and I wish you all the best of luck in your futures. Whether you're going to university to further your education, gaining an apprenticeship or going straight into employment, I wish you the best of luck. I hope that you can take everything you've been taught and use that out in the adult world and show everyone how great you can be. I hope we shall cross paths in our future and share many stories and memories 
Your contribution to the school and your time here has been massive. To the staff here, I, along with all the rest of the Year 13s, would like to thank you all. Your commitment to your students and your love for your craft make the environment here that little bit better in every aspect. The school becomes so much more enjoyable just by you being you. I would like to especially thank all of the staff that have helped me on my journey here, right from coming in these gates to now making my way out from these same gates. To Mr Bovey and Mr Atkin, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be your head prefect this year and also providing me the opportunity to come here at the start of 2019. I set myself big expectations, both your organisation and your easygoing manner with me, Connor and Jonathan, make it so much easier. It has meant that throughout the year I am open up to more and more and I can see a lot more of what I couldn't previously. I loved our supposedly fortnightly meetings and, our, and the conversations we had during them. Mr Bovey, your dedication and professionalism make you a great role model to me and the rest of the prefects, as well as to the school. You do this, though, while still having a very enjoyable, quite witty sense of humour, which always manages to put a smile on my face. You gave me the opportunity to come here, and I've never looked back. It meant a lot to me then, and it still does today. Mr Atkin, your organisation and steadiness while on the job certainly helped me in providing a smooth experience during my time here. Your check-ins and management is a great attribute of yours and sure made me feel at ease throughout my year. Mr Lobb, thank you too. Your mentorship has meant a lot to me. Your support and assistance through all the events run by the school have been amazing. I've thoroughly enjoyed working alongside you. Your morals and expertise around all things involving people and the school have been great in keeping us grounded and moving. To all my rugby coaches who have played a role in my development over the year, Mr McDougall, Mr Will, Mr Braddock, Mr Grant and Mr Greer, thank you for the work you have done with me. With special thank you to now Mr Turnock, Mr Hemeter and Mr Van Stiprian. Your mentorship and coaching has meant a lot to me. Your understanding of the game we all love and your ability to display that and portray that understanding to us so that we may keep improving is next level. I really appreciate the fact that you are largely focused on us being prepared for our future in rugby and not just being a good player right now. That's really important to us, although we may not all realise it now. Special mention to Mr Hemeter, or Bruiser, as we all know him. Your attitude towards us and towards rugby has helped us all develop more than just simply on the rugby field. Your sheer knowledge when it comes to set piece and the fun of the forwards work is outstanding. The work you've done with me, especially around scrummaging, from sports development in, in, in Year 9 to now in First 15. You're a very wise and qualified person, and your opinion has come to mean a lot to me. I've loved working alongside you. First 15 had a lot of huge successes this year. We won most Super 8 games, we drew Pulse and Banner, and to be able to share it with a, four, with a, with a try four minutes out before Richie got over in last play and Jamie kicked the conversion to draw it. And we lost, to the, we lost the national semi-final by one point to the eventual champions and then beat Tauranga Boys College to claim third place in the country. We put good scores over plenty of old foes as well. We could not have achieved that without all of your guidance and coaching. I'd like to also thank the Prefect body of 2023. Your work ethic and initiative have been so important to me and to, my, and to the completion of events and efficiency of our school. We all share strong connections with each and every other Prefect amongst us which is what makes us so effective. As a group, we've been involved in lots of events, both in school and in the community this year. Relay for Life was a huge success and was a lot of fun, from 6 p.m. to 6, 6 a.m. when I was there, and I would recommend everyone get involved in that in the future. Special thanks go to Connor and Jonathan, both of whom I've had to rely on many times throughout the year. We three each bring different mindsets and skills to the leadership group, and I've loved working alongside you. So to you and also to my group of good friends, thank you. You've helped me more than you may realise this year. Crest to Crest was a bit different this year, being in Term 4 and not Term 1, due to the cyclone earlier in the year. It was a great week still. I have nothing but good things to say about the boys who completed this challenge with me. I could not have asked for a stronger group. We had not done a lot of preparation and we didn't have very good sleep while doing it. Still, everyone worked extremely hard and kept going. We didn't have any major issues, it was a very enjoyable time. We had a very entertaining capsize on the river and a largely interrupted sleep on the first night due to a certain someone waking up. I cannot fault any of the boys. They gave it their all. 
Now, I cannot talk about my time at Palmy Boys without talking about College House. Mr. Davidson and Mr. Barwick, you both worked together to run a great hostel. There is nothing more I can say except that I have loved being a part of College House. I've enjoyed every minute. The culture and brotherhood that is created at Palmy Boys is even furthered and added to tenfold by being a part of Murray Club. Everything from hours of marching to our morning runs to lots of evening training for Nigers, it has been amazing. So extra special thank you to all the staff at the hostel, from the cleaning staff and kitchen staff to of course the College House Masters. Thank you for creating a disciplined environment while also being caring and lots of fun. To be able to win Shan Shield three years in a row has been a huge highlight, especially this year in my last year with one of the best Shan Shield comebacks, I might say, ever. After Winter Sports Day learning we were 17 points behind with only two days left of events, it didn't look promising. But the determination and resilience shown by Murray was exceptional. To be able to claw it back through Junior and Senior Monrad Cup, I was a very nervous person on the last day of Senior Monrad Cup as we needed certain results to go our way and there was no, no room for error. But luckily they did. Lastly, to my parents, it is not easy sending your son away, and I know you have made sacrifices for that, which I can never thank you enough. Constant driving back and forth to school and sports trips isn't ideal when you live a while away. Thank you for shaping who I am today. Now to finish off, I'm talking to the rest of you boys, who are staying here under the guidance of Palmy Boys. Stay safe and come back ready for another year. Keep carrying the Palmy Boys crest with pride. Keep representing us well. Your time at the school will be over a lot sooner than you may think. It won't, it won't be long even for you year nines before you're sitting here as a year 13, concluding your schooling here. Keep looking around you. At the school, all around you, there are your brothers, your teachers and your mentors, some of whom you may not have even met yet. They're all around you. Keep talking to them and keep strong relationships with them all. These people are what shape who you turn out to be, who you associate with is the leading cause of who you turn out to be. Finally, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. You cannot learn by only doing what you know, and you cannot grow by never experiencing anything tough. To be able to grow, you need to constantly be experiencing uncomfortable environments, and you cannot hope to achieve anything noteworthy or grow anything near enough to be truly content without going through many uncomfortable environments and coming out the other side being better for it. So keep doing new things and working hard. I'd like to thank Palmerston North Boys High School for providing me the tools I need to stand tall once I leave here. This school has meant so much to me and done even more for me. It will leave a big hole and remain a huge part of who I am and I will do my utmost best to stay involved with school as I get older. I wish you all a happy holidays, best of luck for your exams and I wish you all a bright future. Thank you, Palmy Boys. Well done, Connor. Superb. Uh, we're going to finish this evening, ladies and gentlemen, with the national anthem, uh, at the conclusion of which, if I could ask you to please remain standing while the official party leaves the stage, uh, and a reminder to Year 13s, if you'd like to join on the end of the procession as we depart, you'd be more than welcome. Please stand.
once again, thank you very much for coming this evening, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you've enjoyed your evening. Gentlemen.